Hello, this is Jared from LetterDroid.com. Welcome to the second part of the tutorial for creating a Minesweeper game for Android. What we'll be covering in today's tutorial is the game logic behind setting up a grid of mines in Minesweeper. We'll go through that and then at the end of this video, we'll be able to show all the tiles upright on the screen, showing where all the bombs are placed and the numbers and the blank squares. So let's get started. So first thing we'll do is we'll jump into the mine grid class we'll add two new methods to this mind grid class. The first method is called toIndex. It passes a integer of a x coordinate and a y coordinate. And what it will do is it will convert those x and y coordinates into an index uh, in our list. So we have a, just a list of cells. It's not a 2D list. It's um, just one continuous list. This will allow us to specify x and y coordinates to retrieve the appropriate index in our list of cells. The second method is called 2xy and it returns an integer array. This integer array will just contain an x and y coordinate and in it we pass a index and from there it will convert the index into x and y coordinates that we'll be able to use for easily locating cells. This simplifies the process for us to create the grid of bombs and numbers and locating adjacent cells so we can calculate those numbers correctly. What we'll do next is we'll create a new method in this mind grid class called generate grid. And it will take a parameter of an integer for the number of bombs that we want to place in the grid. So next what I'll do is I'll paste some code inside this generate grid method and I'll walk you through it now. So we've got an integer that, cup, that counts the number of bombs that have been placed in the grid. And then we'll start a while loop where we check that the number of bombs placed is less than the total number of bombs we need to place. We'll calculate a random coordinate in the x and y direction using the random next int method, passing the size as the maximum value. In this case, we're making a 10 by 10 grid. So the maximum integer can be a random integer between zero and nine. Next, we obtain the index using the X and Y coordinates using our helper method to index. And we use that index by looking up the cells list, getting, that in, getting the cell at that index and checking the value and checking that it's a blank value. Now, if it's a blank value, what we'll do is we'll override that cell with a bomb and we'll add one to the bombs placed and we'll continue this process until all the bombs have been placed that we need to place. So the next thing I'll do is I'll create another helper method underneath the 2xy method. This method is called cell at. It takes an x and y coordinate and what it does it will first check that the x and y coordinate is on the board of the grid and after it's done that what it will do is it will retrieve the relevant cell at that x and y coordinate by first transforming that into an index and retrieve that cell and return it. Underneath the generate grid method, I'll add a new method. This method is called adjacent cells. It will return a list of cells and it takes an integer for an x coordinate and a y coordinate as parameters. So what it does first is it generates a list of cells called adjacent cells as an empty array list. Next, it generates a separate array list for a list of cells. And for that temporary list of cells, it will add each cell at an X and Y coordinate. And what it does, it will uh, surround that tile uh, in the eight different directions around that tile. So what it's doing is just circling around that one tile in a grid and attempting to locate the cell at that point on the grid. Now, this may return null. The cell at method may return null. So then after we've grabbed all those different cells and added it to the cell list, we'll check each cell in that cell list one by one. And if that value is not null, we'll add that to the list of adjacent cells, which is the array list we defined right at the top of the method. And finally, we'll return that list of adjacent cells. 
Next, we'll go back into the generate grid method. So now that we've placed our bombs throughout the grid, what we need to do is we need to calculate the numbers to display in that grid near the bombs. So I'll add a new code segment to this method. And I'll take you through how it works. So we have two for loops, one for the X direction and one for the Y direction. And for each cell, we check that the value is not a bomb. And if the value is not a bomb, what we do is we calculate the adjacent cells. And then what we do is we loop through that list of adjacent cells and we check for bombs in that list. And if we find any bombs, they just get added to a running total of count bombs. And if there's more than zero bombs, we'll update that cell with a new value of count bombs so we can display the real value for the number of bombs touching that cell. So next what we need to do is jump into the Minesweeper game class and we need to make sure that this generate grid method is invoked. We'll add a section to the Minesweeper game constructor to call the generate grid method. So we'll call mindgrid.generateGrid grid and we'll pass the number of bombs and this will need to be passed in the constructor for the Minesweeper game. And going back into the main activity, we will need to update the constructor to provide the number of bombs. In this case, we'll make it 10. Another thing we'll do in the main activity class is we'll create a text view attribute for the smiley face. And we'll initialize that in the onCreate method using the findViewById method. And we'll add an onClick listener to the smiley face. And in that onClick method, what we'll do is we will create a new game. And then what we'll do is we'll update the adapter with the data from that new game using the setSales method. Next, we'll open up the MindGrid Recycler Adapter class and we'll go into the bind method and we'll make some additions to the bind method. I'm just pasting in some code now. So this will allow us to display uh, the value inside the text view for that tile in the grid. Now, if it's a bomb, we'll determine that by using the getValue method of the cell. And if it is a bomb, what we'll do is we'll set the text for that text view to be to use the bomb emoji. In the case it's a blank tile, we will set the text to an empty string and we'll update the background color for the item view to be set to the color white. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll just get the value from the cell.getValue because it'll be a number and we'll set that in the text for the text view. And if it's a number one, we'll set the color to blue. If it's a number two, we'll set the color to green. And if it's a, the value of three, we'll set the text color to a value of red. To show you what this looks like, I will show you in the emulator. Okay, so now you can see all the tiles have been uh, exposed in this freshly generated grid. And if you look carefully at the numbers there, they are accurate. You can see that for the numbers in the grid that are only touching one bomb, they're set to the number one. If they're touching no bombs, they're cleared and colored white. If they're touching two bombs, they're colored green with the number two. If I touch the smiley face, this grid should reset. And I'll do it a few times. So that's the end of this part of the tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.